Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in to the show. I'm your host, the one and only M to the J to the, you already know how I go. Today's topic is going to be very, very special. It's going to be piggybacking on an episode that I've already done when I discussed about on my podcast. Uh, before I get started into this, I want to let all you guys know, for all you guys that are actually supporters already, this is going to be another platform where I'm going to be uploading podcasts, so I'm going to be doing visual, actual podcasts for you guys, groups and discussions, so you guys will be able to check out visual content as well as being able to go on to uh, any, any, any platform. Any platform you're on, it don't matter whether it's Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, Clout, it doesn't matter. All podcast platforms you can find my podcast by typing in The Bratford Files. If you type in The Bratford Files, you will find my podcast, okay? So, but this is this is going to be my second way I'm going to be doing uh, basically uh, podcasting to give you guys a visual. So basically to kind of establish a more connection with you guys for you guys to be able to get a visual of me as well. OK, so you can see the man behind the microphone. OK, but anyways, I don't want to be babbling on for too long. So as without further ado, as I told you guys, this is piggybacking on to an episode that I already have on my uh, podcast Um is we're going to be talking about, continuing on talking about, discussing about the Screen 5 franchise. And on this particular episode, I guess you guys can tell from the title, I want to be talking about the Screen 5 reboot, in particular to the structure story plot of the villain versus Sidney Prescott, played by Mrs. Nev Campbell. This is what I want to talk about. Um, like I told you guys from, from one of my other episodes, I'm very, very, very excited about this Screen 5 reboot. I think it's going to be so amazing. I'm going to be, think it's going to be so great. I am so excited to for this screen re reboot to be coming. What I'm not excited about, okay, and I know a lot of you are not excited about it, especially for all you guys that are major horror, suspense, and thriller fans, and especially those teen slasher films. What I'm so, so, so excited about, well, what I'm not excited about is, is that we have to wait until January 14, 2022 in order to see this film. Now that was the that was the initial release date by Paramount Pictures. However, I'm hoping and I'm hoping and I'm praying that they decide to release this film earlier than expected. I think the best 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 time would be around the summertime of 2021 between June and August or a week or two before thank I mean it's not Thanksgiving, a week or two before Halloween next year 2021 i think it will be the perfect perfect time but what i'm thinking is that paramount pinterest and uh screen franchise what i'm thinking is they're banking on the idea of the coronavirus the COVID 19 the whole pandemic and all the protests everything i think they're banking on everything the um being contained and people being able to socially socially get around it up once again like how we are not doing right now i'm thinking that's what they're banking on so they can release this into theaters but if i had to put my last cent on that i wouldn't bank on that i don't think that's going to happen i think we're going to be facing and dealing with this coronavirus for a long time you guys so uh i won't get my hopes up about that now moving on to the top to the, to the main topic at hand about the Villain, the story plot of the villain in the Screen Fire reboot versus uh, Mrs. Sidney Prescott. I'm very curious and very interested to figure out and find out what is going to be the story plot. Now, as we all know, from Screen 1, Screen 2, Screen 3, and Screen 4, the villain's part inside of the saga was irrelevant to the, relevant to the whole structure and the saga of the franchise, Okay. For example, Screen 4, the main villain in Screen 4 was connected to the one to one of the to the main villain in Screen 1. Okay? So when we're talking about Screen 5, I'm, I'm really curious to know how is Paramount gonna go the route of deciding how they're gonna introduce the villain into this reboot. I think it would be best. I'm going to give you guys two, 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 two tips, two of my best advice. So if for some reason that Paramount Pictures or Mr. Wes Craven himself winds up running into this podcast, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, all, all open ears. But there's two options. I think, personally, the number one, my number one option for the villain's role in Screen 5, the reboot, I think that they should bring 
Stu back into Scream 5 and have him be the main villain. Once again, I think they should bring Stu from Scream 1, introduce him back into Scream 5, the reboot, and make the story revolve around him, making it to some kind of significant and some kind of connection and link to Sidney Prescott and Billy, but just making it some type of way relevant. I think this would be the best bet for Scream for the Scream franchise is to bring Stu back into Scream 5 as the main villain. Now, I know a lot of you guys are like, wait a minute. Hey, MJ, wait a minute. I thought Stu was dead. Well, for those of you guys that were, were, were not in a certain age group during the time when Scream 1 first appeared, okay, you have to understand, with books and with stories and with films, sometimes, sometimes the, the way the story progresses it tends to steer people the wrong way or it tends to give people the wrong, well, not give people the wrong message, but the people, the people, us, we tend to misinterpret a certain part of a story or a plot and we automatically assume and come to the assumption that something has occurred. But ladies and gentlemen, and I highly, highly encourage you guys, I'm curious to know what you guys think. You're more than welcome to subscribe. I mean, not subscribe, ladies and gentlemen, but of course you can subscribe to the channel. I'd be more than thankful and grateful for that. But I'm curious to know. I, I highly encourage you guys to tear the comment section up and let me know. Spam that comment section and let me know what you guys think. Do you guys, were you one of those persons and individuals that thought that Stewie was dead? Or were you one of those individuals that realized that Stewie was not dead? Also, I want to let you, I will also want to know, do you guys think it is a good idea for Stu to be brought back into Screen 5, or do you think it's not a good idea? I'm curious to know what you guys think, so make sure you spam in the comments your opinions and comments. So, as I said, I think it would be perfect. I think it would be perfect for the franchise, seeing how this is a reboot. This is a reboot, and I think it's going to be amazing because it's going to be casting Mrs. Nev Campbell, Mr. David Arquette, and Mrs. Courtney Cox. So what but what better other way would be to bring one of the villains, one of the original Don Dadas, one of the original Don Dadas from Screen One, bring him back into the screen reboot as the main villain. And just make the story flow around him, okay? But make sure it has some type of connection and link to Sidney Prescott. I think that would be hell of a, I think that would be an amazing film. It would be hell of a, it would do a hell of a job. Hell of a job. No question about it. Undisputably, with no question about it, non-refutable, it would be a banger. It would be a banger. Now, it's going to be a banger regardless. I think it's personally going to be a banger regardless. The only way this film will not be a banger, which I will get to towards the end of this segment, okay? But moving on. So that was option number one for the villain. Introduce Stu back into the saga. If you choose not to go that route of Stu, a second option would be, I think personally would be to bring a villain into the reboot that somehow, some kind of way links and connects to one of the characters from Scream 2 or Scream 3. I think that would be a hell of a, hell of a, hell of a storyline for him. The main character, Sidney Prescott, versus whoever the vi villain would be, the mysterious villain, because we do not know. Once again, I think it would be a good job for the Scream franchise to bring someone, bring a character, or bring someone that some kind of way has some type of ties to one of the characters from Scream 2 or Scream 3, bring them in as the villain. Now, what will what, what put the icing on the cake? They could actually take these two ideas and put them together and, and bring Stu as the main villain and then bring a, the second villain from basically revolving around someone from Scream 2 and Scream 3. That would be the perfect banger. It will, it will be so awesome and so hot. What do you guys think? Do you guys think this was a bit, do you think, do you think this is a good idea? Curious to know what you guys' opinion is. Um, I just think it would be a, a hell of a job. Whether or not they choose to actually bring Stu back as the main villain and bring a make the, the makes it a second villain have some kind of connection to some character from screen two or screen three whether they choose to go that route or they choose to do one or the other vice versa I think it would be a banger now if they're not looking at if, if that's not going to be one of the way, ways that they plan to structure the villain's role in the screen reboot I'm real curious to know how they're going to go about it 
Now I have I have done a little little research, and there are some rumors out there that it's a possibility that Stu may be brought back as the villain in Screen Five. Now, as I just stated to you guys a minute ago, I think that would set out for a major, major banger, and it, it will be perfect for this reboot. It will be very, very perfect if they choose to go that route, or if they choose to go the route by bringing a main villain that has some type of ties or connection to one of the characters from Screen 2 or Screen 3, or basically do both, have Stu and uh, someone else that actually has some ties to Screen 2 or Screen 3, okay? But I'm so interested, I'm so interested in how this story is going to plot out. I'm so, so, so interested because I already got excited and happy, and I know you guys are happy and thrilled as well. I was so happy and thrilled to, to hear that Mrs. Nev Campbell, Mr. David Arquette, and Mrs. Courtney Cox will be casting in the screen reboot. So you know that's going to be amazing already, and it's going to be a banger. But... As I told you guys, which I will discuss towards the end of this segment, the only way that I could possibly see that this, this screen reboot failing and crashing and not being a banger, I would I will let you guys know. But anyways, as I said, I, I just think that, uh, I, I, like I said, I love the screen franchise. I love the screen franchise for all of you guys that in the late 90s, because that's when the screen one first premiered was in the late 90s, ladies and gentlemen, and it was a banger. It was it was one of it was one of two dominant franchises that came out during the late nineties, and both franchises I love I love the hell out of, but I love the screen franchise as well, and I love me some Nev Campbell. I love me some Nev Campbell. She is she's she's a beast. She's a straight banger, and I'm so excited that she's going to be in this. And like I said, even though we we're used to it already by now, Nev Campbell being in every screen. They have to make sure that this screen reboot, they have to make sure that it's the storyline, it flows properly, and that it has a it has a proper connection between Sidney Prescott and whoever the villain or villains will be. As I stated to you guys, I think Stu would be the best villain. I think he would be the perfect fit. Because as I said, if you guys know, when we saw in screen one, when Sydney slammed that TV, I mean, she told him up. She told Stu up. But when she slammed that TV on his face, we automatically assumed that he was dead. But actual in fact, in reality, I don't think that Stu was dead personally. We never actually saw Stu dead. So I think that that would be the best route for them to bring Stu back. Bring Stu back. And then his co his co host whoever be the second villain would be make it be someone that has some type of ties or connections to the screen two or screen three film. Also, what I also think would be also that they would just set the stone and make this screen reboot awesome and amazing too is if they bring if they bring Randy's sister back into the saga once again. If they bring Randy's sister into the screen reboot as well. For those of you guys that don't know, Randy's sister was introduced into the screen saga in the second film. Once again, Randy's sister, the actress that played Randy's sister, and I want to apologize that I don't know her name off the top of my head, but the, the, the actress that played Randy's sister, I think that she should be casted in this screen reboot as well. I think it would be perfect. It would be even just put more ice in it on top of the cake. I think they can it, it, they can go any kind of way, but I think it would be perfect to just just top it off with the the perfect the perfect milestone. I think some type of way they can find a way how to how to manifest and how to structure her in the story plot and have some type of relevance or significant to Sydney Prescott or just like in Scream Two. They can have her, they can basically have her helping out Sidney Prescott throughout the film, okay? Because if we all know from Scream 2, in Scream 2, she only was in a certain parts and certain segments of the Scream 2 film, so we didn't really get to see that much of her. So I really think in, the, in this Scream reboot, they should bring Randy's sister back into the reboot and have her have more time. Give her more screen time in the screen reboot. Don't just do how y'all did in screen two and just give her a small part. 
Let her have multiple, multiple scenes throughout the movie. Make her more relevant in the, in the screen reboot, okay? It could be very, they could find so many ways how to structure her around the overall story plot between Sidney Prescott and the villain. Now, don't bring her back as no villain. Do not do that. Don't bring her back as no villain because it would make no sense at all. And it would just screw things up personally because Randy was not a villain. And Randy was the one for you guys that don't know. Randy was the Randy was basically the ones that knew everything when it came to suspense, thrills, and horror. horror. And he pretty much helped a lot of them. The ones that did survive in the movie, it was partially because of Randy, the reason why they survived. Uh, now, we know that Randy died and got picked off, got killed in Scream 2. But his sister had small little scenes and small little parts in Scream 2. But I think they should bring the actors that played her into the film. And don't just give her no one or two scenes. Give her a nice, good chunk amount of size and, and make sure it flows. Her, uh, Courtney Cox, David Arquette, and, and uh, Nev Campbell working all reckon, working together to kind of figure out or try to, uh, uh, to, to basically defeat the villains would be perfect. Give her, give her a little bit. Don't give her too much. Like make her, don't make her character too much like Randy, but make, make it to where, you know, she, she's helping out throughout the segment and throughout this movie. I think it will be perfect. But you guys let me know what you think about that too. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to get on before I wrap this up. I'm going to let you guys know the only way possible that I can see, as I spoke of earlier, the only way possible I can see that this screen reboots fail and that it, 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 it just, the only way that it could not do not good and just be garbage and trash. The only way I see this happen, if they mess up the storyline between Sidney Prescott and whoever the villain is. So basically what I'm saying is if they just introduce some villains, um, villain slash villains, if they introduce villains, new villains that has no ties, no significance and no relevance to none of the other Scream sagas, it would make no sense, okay? It would just make no sense, and I think that would just mess the film up, okay? It, it would mess the film up for being how great it could be. But, however, like I said, I think the best route that they should go on um, Paramount Pictures and the Screen franchise and Wes Craven, the best route they should go is is to have, to have Stu from Screen 1, one of the villains from Screen 1, bring him in as the main villain and bring someone else as the second villain that has some type of ties or connection to the Screen 2 or the Screen 3 film and also bring the actress that played Randy's sister, bring her into the reboot as well and give her more than just a, uh, what, what, like a two, three, five minute uh, time on uh, scenes throughout the whole movie. Don't do that. Give her more time throughout the movie and I, I promise you guys it will be so great and awesome. So I'm curious to know what you guys think. Everything that I discussed as far as, uh, for example, Randy's sister being brought back into the uh, reboot, uh, Stu being brought back as the villain, um, Mrs. Sidney Prescott, uh, I mean, not sorry, Mrs. Nev Campbell, Mr. David Arquette, and Miss Courtney Cox being into the um, casting into the screen reboot. What do you guys think? Do you think that this reboot is going to live up to it, the expectation? Sorry, do you think this reboot is going to live up to the expectations or do you guys think that this reboot is going to foul, um, fail and crash? It, it will not live up to the expectations. What do you guys think? Make sure you spam and tear up in comments. Let me know what you th guys think. If you guys want to, um, if you guys are interested in any type of particular topics that you guys would like me to uh, uh, do group discussions on, you're more than likely to uh, send me good feedback on that as well. Also, if you guys are looking for any type of business inquiries when it comes to me, uh, you, if you're in my channel, you, you, there's a section where you can click. Uh, it'll let you go click to my email, and then you can send any feedback or any type of connections. Or send me your info for you guys that are interested as far as business inquiries inquiries such as collaborations etc etc so i want to thank you guys once again for tuning in to the show and supporting much love much love and appreciation i appreciate you guys for all of you guys that are already subscribed to me and been supporting me on my podcast um more and more content is coming on my podcast as well be expecting on the bradford file podcast that the storytelling segments which i know you guys have been waiting because some of you guys that have been supporting me already on my podcast platform, The Bratford Files. A lot of you guys have already been asking me in my personal emails 
Uh, where's the storytelling segments? We're interested to know about the storytelling. We're interested to hear and listen to the storytelling segments. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the storytelling segments are coming up soon. Trust me, best believe the storytelling segments are coming up soon. So be looking out for that. As always, you guys know, I broadcast, go live on Tuesdays and Thursdays, ladies and gentlemen. So I try to be consistently by uploading and broadcasting live on Tuesdays and Thursdays, ladies and gentlemen. So once again, I want to thank you all for tuning in. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to share this video. Click that notification button so you'll always be up to date when I drop new episodes, okay? It's going to be an amazing, amazing thing. I'm just getting this channel started. It's under construction, so be expecting more and more content coming, okay? Uh, so that's all I have for you guys. Once again, thanks for tuning into the show. And if you're not subscribed to the, if you're not subscribed to the show, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you're not subscribed to my podcast, the Bradford Files, make sure you subscribe to the Bradford Files podcast. I'm available on all streaming podcast platforms, Spotify, Apple podcasts, Google podcasts, clout, all of them, whatever, whatever platform you're using, to uh, listen to podcasts or whatever you do, I'm available. All you have to type in is the Bradford Files, and bam, there you go. Also, on this channel, there in, in the About section, actually on my uh, page, you'll see where you'll see the link straight automatically. You'll see the little icon for Spotify, and you'll also see an icon for Anchor, okay? Click that, and it should take you right into either one of those, okay? So that's all I have for you guys. Thank you guys. Much love. Have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day. Much love. Peace and blessings.